But here's what I say. I think they suck. And, and the reason they suck is actually, I think they I actually love help. I, love, I love your bluntness to this today. I love it. <laughs> Omega Red, when is this event coming? When are the secret Avengers going to be farmable? And how soon are we going to get Lady Deathstrike in Marvel Strike Force? I'm discussing that with my brother, Philosopher, on your Marvel Strike Force weekly news update. What is up, brother Philosopher? How are you, my friend? I'm doing great. Good to be here. It is. Gl I am glad you're back. It is always good to have you on the channel and discuss things with you because yeah, I, I always feel we have a good conversation when we ever discuss things. Absolutely. I love that we have very different perspectives. And yes. that's really, I think, what makes this good, because I'll tell you, there's a variety of different players in this game and you want to look at things from different perspectives. I think you learn something. Yeah. And Ed, we, we are going to talk about some war, the war changes, the Doom 2, because uh, we're, we're in different places in this. And we I think we have some different reactions that we are going to discuss that along with the Secret Avengers, Omega Red and uh this this next battle pass is it worth buying all right but without further ado let's get into the game and talk about these secret avengers we had one farm well, maria hill was added to the war store a couple weeks ago but still no word on the availability of sharon carter the power broker or captain sam wilson what do you where do you think they're going to be farmable and when do you think they're going to be made available for us all right, so if I had a bet, I would bet that Captain Sam's going to go to the Blitz, or not the Blitz, I'm sorry, he's the Arena Orb, which everyone hates, but Ugh. I just think that's precisely why they're going to do Ugh. it, right? You just have to think from a scopely perspective, yes. they want to make maximum dollars. Yes. So thinking like, what's the most evil place they could put it? So that's my, my guess, because okay. everyone hates those Arena Orbs. Sharon Carter, maybe they'll, maybe they'll throw her on a note or something like that, because she's... Uh, she was an event character, so a lot of people have her already at five stars yeah. or above. So I think that's the one that they're going to make the least money off of. Whereas if they frustrate you with the arena orbs with Captain Sam, you could just feel the compelled to buy an offer. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I, I think the arena orb is the worst place other than the war store. But Maria Hill was out of there. I'm hoping they don't go arena orb just because Phylavel was added there so recently. So I'm hoping Captain Sam ended up on a node. And yeah, you're right. Sharon Carter was an event very easily available. So I'm thinking they're going to put her in an easy place like the raid store. But who knows? We haven't got any indication on where where these guys are going to be farmable, when they're going to be farmable. Uh, I think a lot of people are suspecting maybe in tomorrow's blog post, we'll get some information on that. When do you think we'll get information on this, on these characters with their availability? Well, also thinking in terms of pure evilness, uh, I think the most evil thing for them to do would be to, read, to tell us one of them in the blog post uh, that's coming this week and then leave the other one hanging because, you know, they want to make a scramble for free to play. They usually want to make it. So you have to really scramble and be super uh, efficient and be kind of lucky to get a uh, legendary in the first I th pass. I think, you know, I think, you know, scopely better than I do. They do the most evil thing as possible yeah we'll probably get where shared card is going to be available tomorrow <laughs> and exactly. then they're going to hold captain sam off for a few more weeks get us get us in that panic stage for those of us that want omega red but speaking of omega red there was like there was a kind of a there was an in-game message sort of a data mine a couple weeks ago or uh, on 10 5 and the original message this was the original message the in-game mail that had the date for omega red Mario character shards are now available to war so for 1375 credits recruit the fire support leader and prepare for omega red on november 7th 5 p.m now this was later changed in the game mail but as you know things change a lot as scopely so november 2nd is a tuesday do you think that this date is accurate or do you think we're going to get uh omega red sooner than November 2nd. I think that's what Scopely thought the date was on October 5th, but they're so <laughs> incompetent uh, that they don't. I mean, I don't think they even know what they're going to do right in a couple days. I mean, yeah. I at times to be very blunt, I mean, I I'm constantly trying to figure out when they're going to release things because I want to be around to do a stream to, you know, make content or whatever. And I don't think they know. When I'll ask, like, I'll ask blunt questions of them, like, what's going on? Is this happening tomorrow? I don't think they even know. My, I really don't think they know what's going on. I think it's just a bit of a mess over there. Yeah, I, th I think what you said is accurate. You know, on the 5th, th that's when they intended it to be released. But then they removed a date because 
They 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 their planning is uh, is very subject to last minute changes all the time. So um, right at one point, I think they did think the second, but who knows? Let me know your comment. Let me know your guesses in the uh, comments, guys. When do you think we're gonna get this Omega Red event? And when are you gonna think we're gonna get notice of when Omega Red event is gonna start? But um, yeah, and I'm very curious. I think that that is the big prize that a lot of people are going for right now. But uh, we we're talking about a event bugs changes one of the worst milestone events in my opinion was uh just ended and that was the weapon x or was supposed to end it actually didn't it's actually going on right now <laughs> the final this was a tweet sent out last night because the, the milestones were supposed to end last night they let them keep going because people were claiming these rewards and i think this is the best solution honestly the final experiment uh, x milestones was intended to end today and this was a tweet from yesterday However, an incident in the milestone was unintentionally started. As players have started making progress in the exit milestones, it will continue to run for the length of the timer. Enjoy the bonus rewards. I think this is the proper response. Uh, what do you think uh, they, what, how do you feel about this event? I, I never got to talk to you about this event. Did, did you like this event? Did you, were you hoping that we would get some shards for the, the Wolverine Weapon X costume? Or do you just like that the the teal gear that was in those orbs? What, what did you think of this event? I thought this was an event that was tailored to Krakens. And the whole point was to get Krakens to spend an insane amount of cores to get teal gear. I mean, this is how they make all their money. So whenever they're getting ready to race a new dark dimension or they introduce a new gear tier yeah there's always cracking super whale players who want to get the gear first mm -hmm. and so to me this was like an event meant to give them an incentive to spend thousands of cores <laughs> and so uh here, you know i guess my take on it i mean that's just what it was and i i guess my take on it is the fact that they made the costume something that they got like that was like the big thing they got out of it <laughs> I actually think that's the direction they should go more of in this game. So, I mean, maybe this is a controversial take, but I actually would would be fine if they made it so like the, the super whale stuff to get was all these like costumes, which frankly, I don't care about. Yeah, um, I actually they think the I don't even think the costume looks that good. I mean, other people disagree. I have it and I just think it looks weird. Yeah, um, but uh, <laughs> I would rather they move in that direction and have like cosmetics be the main thing that whales get out of this game. And then they make the characters more available. Um, and I, I, you know, to me, if we could move more in that direction, as some games have done, I think that would be better for the game. So that piece of it really didn't, I know there's a lot of people upset about that. That didn't bother me. And I just thought the event was very chintzy, like low value. And they did it to just, I think, incentivize people who are already going to be trying to race for DD5. Yeah, I, I kind of like the grinding for costumes, but I, I like what you're saying. You know, games like Fortnite make all their profits on just the, the visual aspects and nothing that changes gameplay. So there is there is some precedent that game companies can make a lot of money with just these uh, skins and things like that. I I I. I I think it was I think a lot of the the reaction from the community was a change this was not communicated beforehand that oh this Wolverine costume it's gonna be harder to obtain you're gonna have to spend money to get this I think a lot of people were looking at the costume and thinking oh yeah previous events we could just grind out and get these costumes and now they make these changes if this is their monetization going forward I don't mind this but I think this is a monetization in addition to all their other monetization methods. So I, I do mind this, but if they're going to change their ways and just focus more on these costumes, visual aspects, these skins, I, I think that could be a good thing if they ease up on some other things, but this is Scopely. They're, 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 they're <laughs> squeezing every last bit out of, out of the players. So yeah, that's, I don't know. Any, any other thoughts on this event in this costume? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's fair. Uh, by the way, I mean, I do. I think they're going to crab cash wherever they can. Yeah, sure. I mean, but if this opens up a revenue stream and they feel like less pressured to try to squeeze everything out of the out of players that they can on these characters, I think that would be better for the game. I, I uh, frankly, it would be better if like it maybe are they just keep their passes their monthly passes but the offers became less insane yeah other than the stupid costumes then that would be great from from my perspective that would be good for the game gotcha gotcha now um there was there was a, there was another little bug that happened this past week and that was when silver samurai added was added to the game now as you can see here there's a one star one red star silver server silver samurai drop with a gold bar around it now this was just a visual bug but it's, it's kind of, it's, I think it was kind of annoying when people saw this, that, you know, oh, 
I'm getting an awesome silver samurai, but oh no, it's only one star. Did you, did you, uh, were you pulling your uh, red stars during this time though, at this, uh, when this visual bug was going on? I actually, so I got, I got home and I started, I was starting to do this as the bug was happening. I was getting tons of messages and screenshots and people were complaining and I was communicating with uh, Cerebro and Lori, who's his new like assistant, essentially, or not assistant, but a helper or whatever, at the time saying, what the heck is going on? Because I didn't want to pull all my red stars because I had some elite orbs and everything. I didn't want to yeah. pull them if I was going to get a bad result. And so they said it was visual only. And I took some time to sort of run down complaints people had that they thought it wasn't visual only. They thought that it was actually some mess up in the orbs. But once I kind of figured out, it seemed to me that it was just visual. Okay. I seemed like that was right. I kind of debunked some of the the other news I was hearing. Then I started pulling my orbs. Then okay, well, well, that that's good. That it was just because it was more more of annoyance of getting your your expectations super high and then having it crashing down. So other other than those few seconds of joy and then uh, disappointment, <laughs> I guess it no no harm no foul. <laughs> And I exactly. do want to continue with Silver Surfer. I, just, I keep saying Silver Surfer. Silver Samurai, I do want to continue with him. But let, let, I do want to move on to some some of these raids because we're in different places of Alliance. You know, I I, I know how, what our Alliance is doing and I know your Alliance is probably uh, doing a lot more. We're in, we're in Doom 2. We're getting some teal gear on a daily basis, but we're in the difficulty zero version of Doom 2. Only about 30 to 60% on a daily basis. You guys are what? The third, second or third difficulty right now? We're in the third. We're in uh, 2.3, so d difficulty three. And we kind of, we'll do 100% certain days, but you know, other days we'll just be like 80 or 90 or whatever, but okay. it's, it's something around there. Um, so yeah, we, we did, we kind of, we did the other difficulties. I do have a sense of the other difficulties because we went through them for the first time completion and all that. So what did, what did you think of the differences between the difficulty? Is it, was it worth the added difficulty for the amount of rewards that you're getting in exchange for that? Or is it just, it's more difficult, we could do it and the rewards are slightly better. So we're going to do it anyway. Yeah, it's a really great question. So I will say, first of all, I thought, and I'd be interested in your thoughts, Valley, is I thought Doom 2.0 didn't seem much harder than 1.1. I mean, maybe it's easier, maybe it's harder, maybe it's the I same. It was, I don't I know. I thought it was easier, actually. The symbiotes, they no problem with the bio section, whereas Doom 1. Point, what is it, 1.1? They, yeah. they struggle a little. So I thought Doom 2.0 was a little easier than 1.1. Was, was that, was that yeah. kind of your impression? When you, when you first I went in so there? Too. I thought so too, but I only ran it once. And okay. so I was like, well, I'm like, I don't want to make some definitive conclusion here, but man, this seems easier to me. I'm just blowing through this. I mean, I did it. I was at like a work event and it's one of these things where you're kind of sneaking off with your phone to get through some nodes. And I'm like, wow, this is really easy. Were you, were you, fully, were you fully auto wig doom too <laughs> the day it came out? <laughs> I wasn't no, I don't necessarily. I wasn't paying a lot of attention. I'm like sitting there drinking my wine and uh, you know, or whatever, drinking a glass of wine. I'm like, okay, let's press some buttons here. It's pretty easy. Uh, so I, I don't know. I mean, that was my impression. Uh, I, I have to say about the rewards, a couple thoughts on it. I, I one thing that really concerns me, Valley, is that they actually drop off some of the rewards. If you compare. Um, what you're getting even in Doom 2 to go to 1.1, you're going to see some stuff in 1.1 that you're not, that you don't, that in 1.1 you don't get. So you're not getting in two. In other words, like for example, in 1.1, we were getting like Armory 15 orbs. We don't get those in Doom 2 anymore. Mm, I forgot and, about and those. I, I forgot about yeah. those. <laughs> The, the thing is, they don't matter that much for us now. Like, it's easy to forget about them. But you know what's going to happen? Like, a year from now, new players are going to skip Doom 1. They're going to go right to Doom 2. And then they're going to have a shortage. It'll be like the T2 problem we have. Mm. Where the T2 blue ability mats, where people skip Ultima 6. Or they go to right to Ultima 7. And then they don't have any T2s anymore. And so I do... I, that's one of my big concerns here. Is that they're, like, not just... They're not making it so that it is all like completely, obviously, 100% better and you get everything you could yeah. get in 1.1 to go to 2. So I don't like that. Uh, that's my biggest complaint about it. As for the difficulties, yeah, I mean, we had an internal debate for whether... So difficulty 3 actually doesn't have better rewards than difficulty 2 unless you do 100%. 
Okay. But Let's... our view, yeah, my view on it, I mean, my vote as a captain in my alliance was, let's try to push the hard content because it's more fun than just like yeah. having it easy. But other people have different views on that. But I, they really just need to make the rewards in this game where it's obviously better as you go up. I mean, every other game I've played, like World of Warcraft or something, it's not like you do the harder raids and then you're like, well, the gear's kind of the same. Like, yeah. no, it's like clearly better. So I, I don't really understand like why it just can't always be better as you go up and you don't ever run out of whether it's t2 ability mats or armory 15 or something else it should just be better as you go up i i agree with you and i think most players agree with you as well here's just a big question though do you think this is planned by scopely to reduce rewards as you go up as kind of a bottleneck as a fresh edition mechanic or do you think it's like oh yeah we forgot about these orbs just like i did and they're like oh we we forgot to put these t2s we forgot that they're going to be a bottleneck we forgot that they still people still will need these gear 15 pieces do you do you think it's incompetence or malice i think it's that i actually <laughs> think it's 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 conniving i think that they in my opinion is they spend more time on spreadsheets figuring out what bottlenecks we have and how to make money off of us than they do like doing stuff to you know test characters in their game <laughs> and the reason i'm so convinced about these bottlenecks is people have bottlenecks at every level of this game yeah and one thing you you one big thing you, that a lot of viewers may not understand is the people that spend a jillion dollars on this game mm. They still have bottlenecks too. There are people <laughs> in my alliance who spend more money on this game than you probably make in a year. And these guys still have bottlenecks that they <laughs> complain about constantly because this game is like totally constructed that no matter what you do, no matter how much money you spend, no matter how much time you play, you always have some bottleneck that you could keep getting upset about and wanting to spend more on. Yeah, that's 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 something that Scopely does very, very well. You know, they don't test their characters well, but they they know how to make us feel like we need more resources and get people that like sh question, should I spend on this or should I just wait this out? And they, they do that very well. Uh, but yeah, other other things that I think I think should be normal, like playtesting your characters, removing bugs, they they don't do very well. All right. Any any other things on Doom too? I I hope they they even out the rewards, but I do like the difficulty. I I, I kind of agree with you on Doom too, and I'm curious to get to to where you guys are right now. Any anything? Yeah, else I gotta I gotta tell you the other thing. I will just say just to agree with you, man, is the uh, symbiotes do very well in Doom too, even up through difficulty three. Oh, nice. Okay, so, that's good to hear. So, so yeah, well, there's all these people predicting like, oh my god, this means a bio team's coming out this month or mm. next month. I mean. I have no idea. Maybe you have to ask Drew, the rumor guy or whatever. Um, I don't I don't have my own rumor guy, so I don't know. But uh, <laughs> one thing that just suggests to me as somebody who doesn't have my own rumor guy. He's, that, a, he's, not, uh, let me just be, he's not my rumor guy. <laughs> he, he's just a rumor guy. He can, he, anybody could get rumors from him. <laughs> oh, well, OK, well, there you go. So well, I don't have quite the access level here to the uh, to Drew, Drew does it. I don't have his number on my speed dial. So uh, anyway, uh, I don't know, but it just suggests to me that like there's not some big great. They're not creating some great need. Like, you know, so Scopely sometimes creates it where it's like you're so frustrated that you feel like you have to buy the new team. Yeah. Uh, they did not do that with bio this time at all. And they also didn't do it with mutant. I mean, the Axemen can cheese their way through these yeah. nodes pretty pretty well. Yeah, that was that was one major change. You could use your Axemen pretty much throughout difficulty 2.0. Uh right. 1.1, you couldn't use the Axemen. You had to use a different team on that. So different. Oh, actually, I got one more question before we move on. At the higher difficulties, what are you using on tech? So I use the three characters. You have the three actual characters that you want to use, which are uh, Kestrel, Doom, and Doc Ock. Okay. And then, then you have what I call the sacrificial lambs. They're the fourth and fifth characters. I literally have a whole bunch of them that I just <laughs> rotate in and out. And their job is basically to like stay alive long enough and draw some hits. Okay. So the the big three stay alive for like and make it through the node like that. Gotcha. If the big three stay alive, that's all that we that's all okay. that matters. Okay. And that's that's my similar experience whenever I get to the text. I was just wondering if uh, you had a solution. Yet. Hopefully, hopefully that strike gives us some relief, or hopefully there's some relief in tech coming up soon. But uh yeah that's tech tech tech's kind of a problem right now All right uh other thing i wanted to talk to you about because we're at different places in the game is war uh i'm in a very casual war alliance and um 
You know, that 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 means that we the words don't matter. The start times isn't as important. Uh, you know, not everybody's on even even our opponents at the start. With yours, you're probably, you're way more competitive, which means that start time organizing that is a lot more important to you. It's been a few weeks, a few wars, a few uh, different battles of war. How how have you guys been affected by this? Is it made it easier, harder, better, worse? What are, what is your reaction to wars as a uh, competitive alliance player? Yeah, and I, and I know my experience may not be uh, everybody's, but here's what I say: I think they suck, and and the reason they suck is actually I think they I actually your, help. I love, I love your bluntness today. today. I love it. Yeah, we're cutting through the crap here on exactly. Valley's channel. Exactly. So here's here's my take, guys. Uh, Look, these alliance, the, these war changes actually help alliances like mine too much. I mean, yeah. right now, the number three, number four, number five alliances in the game can't even clear us mm. by the end of the war. Like by by like the, the the full period, they can't full clear us. So it just makes it the, the it, because they've made defense so much heavier uh, in terms of all these new buffs with cargo bay and so forth. Not only do the teams play and all the additional slots. They've just made it like a tease. They've made it harder to do punch ups. So they've they've made it so the the range of competitive matchups is is less. They also made it where there's this huge reward for having everyone online and just race to take out the other side's armory and hangar and everything right in the beginning, which we do. And I'm you know and coordinated super competitive war alliances are going to do. And maybe that's healthy. Maybe that's good. Maybe some people like that. From my perspective, I just think it, it makes it so it's harder for a lot of alliances to compete. And I think war is more fun when more people have a chance. And so I just yeah. don't, I don't like it. I think it was better when there were lower alliances that were trying to punch up really high on us and they, having a lot of success in that. And, and I mean, not, not, and they wouldn't always win, but they were they could scare us and make it a real contest and we would have to work very hard to make sure that we came up with tricky defenses and and stuff like that i just think that's that's more fun that way so you were on the test server when when these changes the first and the second round of this is this kind of what you were expecting as far as uh, when these war changes were implemented it, it's going to be less competitive at the higher levels and uh, i mean or or do you think their their intentions was to make this more fun i mean was this their grand plan to make it make it squeeze like this and maybe people feel like they have to catch up they have to spend money to catch up or or, or do you think their goal was fun and people spend because it's fun? So, okay. The first, the first war test was even worse. Okay. In terms of what they had, it was a really, it was really bad. I guess it's like and a positive between, thing, right? They make some changes. They made some positive changes. And I, I, between one and two, I actually had a direct DM conversation with Jason Bender, who's like some big shot over at Scopely <laughs> next or whatever. And, um, you know, I, I expressed my, I can't really, I'm not going to give you, tell you what he told me, but I expressed my views. I told him I thought this was bad for the game. I, I told him from my perspective, it's just bad to have war be this time consuming or yeah. something where you, if you're not online, I mean, you don't want to be like you're, you know, you're in the wrong time zone. You wake up and the war's basically over because they've taken your, your key rooms. That's no fun. Yeah. Uh, from my perspective, it's just, it's a mobile game. It's, it's not something that's not like supposed to be your job. So I, I expressed all that to him. And basically the gist was, you know, from the, my impression, I'm only going to say what he said, but my view of it is they're, you know, they, 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 they were going to do what they're going to do. And they're going to try to solve these problems later. Like they, I think my, my views and my concerns and the concerns of others that, that were there were, were heard. And I think that I'm not saying they don't hear or can care about our views. I don't know one way or the other. I can't look into their hearts, but what I can see from their actions is they're just going to move ahead with what they want. And I personally think the primary goal here was to force people to invest in more teams. Mm. And that's what they were most interested in here was having more slots and, and having it so that alliances were more disadvantaged unless they built up their rosters more because they want you investing in older teams. Cause what they're seeing is players are skipping too many old teams and they don't want that to happen gotcha now you mentioned the the time aspect and i think when you interviewed cerebro he, he said that two hours a day is what they expect from players or, or their target for players about two hours a day 
Do you think these war changes have added more time or decreased the time that you're spending in Marvel Strike Force on a daily basis? So for me, they've decreased it because we know we can't lose some of these wars, so okay. I can just take them off. Nice. Okay, but um, not what everybody. I what not everybody's in that situation, and the thing that frustrates me about it, as I explained to, to Mr. Bender, is you have to be online at a certain time of the day. Like, what if you have like your kid has a soccer game at that time? Like, what if you have to be at work or something? Like, it's just. It's not, you know, yes, I have an alliance of hardcore players who are all going to decide that they're going to wake up and be online, you know, and ready to go at 1 p.m. or something. But like, that's not that shouldn't be expected for a mobile game, in my opinion. Yeah, that was, that that reminds me of those death pool, Deadpool raids back in year one, where it was a two hour raid and everybody had to be on at the same time or you wouldn't complete the raid because of the amount of nodes that you have to do and the energy refreshes. So uh, that got a lot of pushback. So I'm kind of surprised that they're kind of focusing on everybody being on at the same time and in the hardcore lines is for war. Um, any any other war thoughts before we move on? Yeah, I will just say that I think that this has impacted how certain teams have value or not so mm -hmm. i think some of the older war teams now have more value okay like yeah. i i'm probably gonna upgrade teams like fantastic four and so forth i also think which i wasn't before i yeah. also think some of the teams have increased their value like shadowland uh have increased their value we could talk more about that later i know that we have the blitz coming up for white tiger yes yes we will and, and the latest character uh, as a matter of fact silver samurai is uh making an impact in some people's wars has silver samurai really impacted your wars right now what is what is your first-hand thoughts on this character yeah i mean i think he's a very g good war character i think He's not the high impact character that like Deathpool or Kestrel or any of those characters were. Okay, to, to looking at some of the previous event characters, um, but I think in War he's a very very strong character. And what I'm already seeing is this, and you also have to take into account the Wolverine and Sabretooth reworks. Yes. So I think people are doing teams that include those three members plus like some other Marauders or X Men. Uh, uncanny x-men or they're splitting it up and they're having sort of saber tooth with the marauders you know wolverine with the uncanny x-men and then they're throwing silver samurai in one of those teams and he does have a significant impact I, it's not game changing it's not war meta defining right now but that's because obviously the legendary for that team and the full team is not out okay so the three piece not <laughs> as impactful as uh Yes, I mean, I mean, I, I, obviously the the big the big person on that team is Omega Red that gives the trauma, gives that counters. What are what are you experiencing right now with that three piece? Are you using them on offense, defense, and what kind of teams are you facing? So uh, the, some of the toughest teams that I have seen have all three together on one team with a couple extra. So like okay. a couple extra Marauders. So you, you put Strife and Sinister maybe or something. Uh, those, those are some of the teams that are actually challenging as, uh, as for me to to fight on defense. If if that team is on defense, right? If you fight on okay. defense, okay. I have not really seen. I have been using Silver Samurai on offense, and I've just been keeping Uncanny and uh, and Marauder separate. Gotcha. Uh, I have to confess that because of the situation that I'm in, I'm saving my tricky defense ideas for legion because that's our competitive uh like that's our very tough war yeah and the rest of them i'm not i'm not uh trying i'm not using my bag of tricks okay. uh for <laughs> in other wars because i don't want to i don't want to give them away gotcha, uh, to, gotcha. so yeah gotcha I understand. <laughs> now as far as silver samurai himself what value do you see outside of war from any anything anything in raids anything any, do, you, do, you, do you see this Weapon X team having any value in Arena? I know some sometimes on paper, uh, we look at these teams like, no, nothing in Arena. And then later, people will have these weird hybrid teams. Where, what do you think of Silver Samurai outside of War? And maybe even uh, the rest of these Weapon X, Lady Deathstrike and Omega, outside of War? Yeah, I don't see any value for Silver Samurai outside of War. I mean, when I unlocked him, I got to tell you, man, I did some stuff in practice mode to show off the character. Mm -hmm. And then I just took him to RTA and put him with a bunch of level one characters. We had fun chopping people up with his <laughs> katana or whatever. Yeah. But I mean, he's really not. I mean, to me, he's just it is what it is. I mean, he's just he's to me, he's a war character uh, based on what I've seen so far. I don't think he's going to have value elsewhere regarding the, the full Weapon X team. 
uh, you and I were both in a conversation with a developer, but right yes. before the release, where the developer suggested that Omega Red, he thought, would impact the arena meta and yeah. would shake it up in some way. Not the full team, but he thought that character would maybe substitute in or make it more of a soup. That we'll see. I, I don't. I don't know whether to buy uh, Scopely's predictions of the yeah. meta because you know whatever. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if Omega Red and maybe like a hybrid team will be able to counter Infinity Watch for the people that don't have Phylavel or Moon Dragon or Adam Warlock. You know, maybe giving them some war offense options. But I guess I guess we'll see. You know, a lot of Doc Ock did that. Doc Ock did that against the Black Order. So maybe maybe Omega Red will be able to do that against the Infinity Watch. Um, any any other thoughts on Omega Red, Silver Samurai, or the rest of this Weapon X outside of war? Pretty much just Omega Red is what you're thinking. I think that's uh, that's that's right. I think Lady Deathstrike will, as you suggested ha earlier, have some impact in the tech rate, uh, tech uh, nodes of the Doom Raid, just because the options there are pretty bad. Yeah. So it's a low bar to uh, get ahead of the fourth and fifth options there. And and she's a character that's released after Silver Surfer, so yeah, she's gonna have the stats to be able to compete in some of these uh, current. Uh, meta content but we got an event coming up starting in one day and seven hours as of this as of us recording this the curse of muramasa event um anything exciting about these events uh, for you at this point is it just collecting shards because i know even even at the hard level you could just pretty much pick five of your stronger characters and auto the thing uh, what are you are you looking exciting for this outside of getting the shards for silver samurai not really, although I do like the storylines. I actually think they do a nice job with these. This, to me, is actually one of the best parts of the game because the I think it's like a very player-friendly way of releasing characters. And for new, I actually help out a lot of new players. My cousin is free to play, and he's level 68 or 69 right now. Gotcha. And, you know, for somebody like him, this is like a total godsend and he gets a bunch of stuff. I don't think the orbs were as good this time, so he's not going to get as many other characters that he's excited about. But, you know, he's going to get his four star silver samurai or something and working or three or whatever it ends up being. And he's going to work through those medium nodes. And they tend to make it at least on, e I think, on easy at the very least, where you have a lot wider selection of characters. So if, if he has trouble, so if you look, click on the, if you click on where he has the, uh, yeah, on there, on there, you can see, so you see how restricted it is on the hard. Yeah. Now let's go to the other ones. You'll be able to use like on the easy, so it's even on the medium, you can use Thanos and Gamora and, uh, and Symbiote yeah, Spider-Man. Okay. They do that for the newer players. It's actually very nice That's for good. them, right? I and so I, I do. I they did that. That's a good point. <laughs> Yeah, I just help out some of the new players. And so the, the, it just gives you. So I think from my perspective, that's actually like a really nice feature here that the game, frankly, if if they did it right, they should just release all characters this way. And I just think it would be better for the game. Yeah, I like. I didn't even notice that. That's a good point there. Now, I think you're being a little nice when you said this orb is not as good as last time. If we go into this orb of all <laughs> the characters in the honorable traits, I was saying for a while, this is the worst <laughs> event orb in recent memory. I mean, look at the characters here. Uh, all farmable, all farmable. He's a little newer as far as farmable, so maybe not everybody has him in the seven stars, but still farmable. No one, no one, and then Silver Samurai. So one unfarmable character in his entire aura. Previously, we've gotten a few. We've gotten a few newer characters, but with new warriors still being in Strike Pass, Secret Avengers being required for Omega Red. What do you think? Who do you think they could have added in in with this honorable trait uh, to make this a little more uh, appealing for newer players? Or any player, yeah. any player that's going for this, not just newer players, anybody. Well, I just think, you know, one thing obviously it would be a symbiote. I mean, at this stage of the game, we still don't have the symbiotes all farmable, right? I mean, I mean, I don't view symbiote Spider-Man and, and, and anti-venom as farmable. Yeah. Like, could you imagine if you could potentially get some anti-venom charts here for a newer player? That would be an amazing thing to be able to be able to get so, those shards that you've been waiting so high on or send me a spider-man they're players that are sitting a few shards short and have been waiting for weeks and weeks you know that could be a real godsend for them i will say at least with this one they get so for a newer player x23 is valuable because she's a war store character so there is something there i mean for him for like my cousin like that's a Oh, I get X23. I don't have her, you know. I mean, yeah. or they get the couple cream minions in there, you know. So for those players, but it, it really the, the players that I think 
so there's a difference between kind of newer players and older. Like the the, the newer players get something out of that, but yeah. but players who are veteran free to play players, for example, get nothing out of this really, other yeah. than the Silver Samurai shorts. I, I like your point about uh, anti venom. I think anti venom is a lot more honorable than Ronin or Kree Royal Guard. What do you think, guys? What do you think, Valley Club? Let me know in the comments. Who who is more honorable than these guys? We also have, like I mentioned, the strike pass for cloak and dagger also coming up. Um, what what and what? Is, <laughs> I've asked you about this. Does this does this release method excite you as far as them coming back? Um, and where where are your cloak and dagger right now? Well. <laughs> So first of all, the, the, I think this is the worst release method. It's, you know, it's obviously a kind of a paywall sort of thing. They made it so you have to participate in both strike passes and both blitzes to just barely unlock the yeah. two characters. You know, it used to be, I think, if you were a heavy blitzer and you if you're in both blitzes, you could feel like, hey, I'm going to unlock the character at a higher level of stars. They, they yeah. basically made it that if you're free to play, you're just getting the bare minimum here doesn't feel good and it also takes a long time i mean uh, if you're a free-to-play player it could take you a couple months right to get these characters up and running you know even you know even at the low star level so it, it just doesn't feel good in my opinion um but i like the characters a lot i mean i will just say cloak and dagger are very strong um and they're they're characters that are good enough that even if you have them at just low star levels i think they are worth building um mine are very huge so i have a seven i pulled seven red stars Ooh, on dagger nice and i pulled six red stars on cloak oh, so nice. which is great i so i usually stop at five but i just got lucky with those um and so you know i i, I got them up to those star levels i i don't have the seventh on cloak but i went i went more into the dagger from the luminous orbs and then i got in the top one percent in all the in the blitzes nice so, so and obviously i purchased the offers so you know for me the mystic notes are the easiest nodes full, in doom 2.3 and i full auto i haven't tried autoing okay. but i'll tell you this i one shot the mystic boss in 2.3 oh. on my first first try oh my goodness like I, 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 <laughs> first try and i've never done that with new content in other words in this game like i was i was one of the first people try completing a lane in first strike right or yeah. whatever that was a slog man um and it was really hard that first time to just even get through the lane yeah. whereas here i'm like oh just pressing buttons in 2.3 <laughs> with these characters because cloak and dagger just put out so much damage and debuffs do you, do you think that's because the the nodes are <laughs> undertuned in Doom Two, or do you think that uh, Cloak and Dagger are that overtuned? I I actually think the nodes are a little undertuned, okay. uh, with some exceptions. I mean, I think Tech is awful. <laughs> I think that skill. One thing they did is they overtuned skill a little bit. I think they thought they had too many good skill characters. So, like I I mean, Secret Avengers to me are on par with New Warriors. Like new players ask me for U seven point five. Yeah. You know which of those two teams and i actually like secret avengers even a little better for them because they're mistake proof in my in my opinion there's a lot of healing yeah um but and, but and they're gonna become farmable hopefully for omega red yeah which is helpful for rights yeah. exactly so they can get them at a higher star level but like new warriors feel totally op in doom 2 whereas secret avengers to me i don't know if you had this experience like they're really strong and all but like those nodes are a lot harder the skill nodes yeah, uh it's not a challenge two silver surfers in those a doom and yeah yeah there's, there's, there's some hard content in there um yeah i i, I like them <laughs> i don't I, this release method is crap but uh, the characters themselves are good uh speaking of speaking of release methods that are kind of crap i guess it's i guess it's not really a release method other than her costume but this new battle pass now I was thinking of buying this if this has some kill gear, but we go all the way to the end and imagine how disappointed I was when it's all the same kind of gear, all this gear 15 pieces that I guess if you're moving on to Doom 2, you're not getting a lot of this stuff. So maybe they're still trying to sell this. Uh, what is this worth buying at all? I mean, other, if you want the costume, if you're needing Emma, I guess that that could be worth it to you. But for any players that are just trying to progress in their roster, is this enough? of this orange gear and stuff to, to make it worth it in your opinion wow worth it's like a, a subjective question here's what i'd say maybe by, by one one perspective is none of this stuff's worth it but i, I guess what i would just say <laughs> but i guess what i would say is this i mean to me if you're just purely looking at quote value like what is the amount of stuff you're getting for the dollar amount I think that this the these uh battle pass is always a good value because you get like 500 cores 
uh, just on the first rung, right, by buying the pass, and then you get a bunch of orange gear and stuff. And if in Scopely Bucks, like this orange gear costs a fortune, right? If you look at the offers, it costs, you know, thousands of dollars or something. Now, no one's going to buy that stuff. I mean, even I, I'm sure that maybe there are whales that buy these orange gear offers. I, I don't like buying them. I don't see the point of buying these things, but the offers. But I think. So purely from a battle, battle uh, from a value perspective, I could see it, but there's nothing like must have in there, right? Emma's yeah. really kind of not that important anymore. Costumes, like to me, that's great. Like let's let's make it so you wail on costumes. Like I don't personally care about them that much. And then, uh, yeah, like you said, nothing really awesome there other than five gold promos and and uh, you know some cores or whatever. Now this this leads to my next question. Do you think that uh, with these this battle pass emma being in there does this mean that we're, we're getting another gold milestone character does this mean that emma is coming out of there maybe maybe silver is uh symbiote spider-man is coming out of there what do you think you know, this, think I, emma's I, inclusion means anything or is this just something uh, with her costume i think it means something but i had a different conclusion than you about what it meant so uh i don't think anything but i don't think they like gold milestones for some reason okay they've decided that like they, we haven't seen them in a while i have no inside info okay i don't have uh you know i don't have my own rumor guy but yeah. i so i don't know <laughs> but uh but i'm gonna, I'm gonna, uh, give, you, I'm gonna uh, give you his uh, number i'm gonna give you his disco <laughs> contact number after this so, so he, he could be anybody's <laughs> your, your rumor guy <laughs> <laughs> well, I will just tell you, I, I saw so just my own conclusion here. So they haven't had gold milestones for a long time, so I'm not yeah. I'm not looking for that to happen. But what I think is they're going to introduce some new marauders soon or give her her own team or something. Yeah. So they're probably going to make the Hellfire Club team or give her some new team. And this is the first step to making her more farmable. And then, yeah, I don't know who they'll put in the milestone orb. For all we know, it could end up being uh, some other character that's just been unfarmable for a while, right? There's so many of those. Or or potentially a new character. We just got word that Lady Death, or not just got word, but earlier this week, we got word that Lady Deathstrike is going to be available in a lab experiments event. Now, we already ha normally they don't do a lot of these uh, similar events double time in uh in each patch so right now i guess we're, we're or not right now but in in uh the day in a day we're getting the event for silver samurai when do you what what kind of event do you think this is going to be because obviously it's not going to be that campaign event like we have for silver samurai it's gonna be something else so do you think it's gonna be like a, a milestone event or like yeah, that would be my guess moon dragon yeah, so I was thinking like the Moon Dragon or Shang Chi event. They, they must have thought they made enough, a lot of money on those, right? They seem to like those lately. Yeah. So I, I, that's always what I'm trying to figure out. Like, okay, where do these people think they're going to make a buck? And then that's how I predict what they're going to do. That's my my level of rumor is trying to figure out uh, how they can make a buck. So that's my gut on this. I actually okay. don't mind the, the the milestones because people can blitz away you know and they get some stuff and they have the offers or whatever hopefully they don't do one thing i do hate is when they make them a core available where you have to like core first to get them like mm -hmm. a few days early i find that silly oh i don't like those as well but i guess i guess it's better than what they had in the store previously which was those uh, fully crafted pieces that were just ridiculous cost i, I know I, oh, yeah. most people aren't going to buy those uh, character shards at that higher rate but for some people, I guess I guess it's better than uh, what the option was there previously. Um, any any other thoughts on Lady Deathstrike? When do you think we're gonna get this event? I mean, it seems like the Silver Samurai event was delayed uh, a while. I thought we we're gonna have it last week, but because of that flag on his chest, they had to wait a while. So when when do you think this is coming? Do you think this is gonna run in like in conjunction with the Silver Samurai event, or they're gonna wait till further along? Yeah, it's a great question. I'm thinking it, it, it could even be as soon as next week. I think it, I'm thinking it's either next week or the week after because you have to think based on that uh, that other uh, 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 mail that you showed us that early November is going to be the time for Omega Red, right? So yeah. they got us. They got to squeeze her in there. Yeah. So I, I think next week is uh, sounds correct. So yeah, two characters uh, stuff. I mean, considering the date on this, the tenth, the ninth of october so yeah i i think that's my prediction as well now we we are getting a new blitz uh, not i guess she is uh sort of farmable she's in a blitz orb so not the most friendly farming location but we're getting a white tiger to blitz starting later today 
how valuable is White Tiger right now? You, we talked about Shadowlands a little bit. I know you wanted to go a little more detail. What is what is the value for White Tiger and Shadowlands at this point? So I actually think their value has gone up because there are more war teams and this is a team that goes fast enough that it can beat a lot of new meta characters is it before hangers uh, down in other words if you go before the hangers down um you get deflect on spawn that makes moon knight go super fast and that team does very well and it's very valuable in war right now it's be, it's actually increased in value recently since the war changes and she's the most important member to have big on the team so you know if you've been sitting around with a smaller white tiger you know there's there's still players that need shards of her this is not a character that's just been farmable for so long that everyone has her you know what i mean has yeah. been playing for a while has her at five seven stars so I actually think this is the sort of blitz that's meaningful for there's going to be some players going. I, I won't go hard on it purposely so I don't take shards away from people. But there's going to be some people who are going to go super hard on this and get to get some extra shards and good for them. Yeah, I got I got lucky in blitz orbs earlier this week, so I don't have to. So I'm going to do what you do. I'm going to go very low on the score so other people can get high on the rankings now. Um, yeah, she and like you said, she is she is the most valuable member of that team. So if you want your Shadowlands to work, you're going to need a pretty big white tiger, kind of like she's like the X23 of this team where uh, yep. X-Force was the most valuable. All right, uh, we got some bonus of our legendary events coming back. We just had uh, Magneto come back, and I do want to talk about him because there's there's some rumors that he may be getting a rework. We talked about Emma potentially at a Hellfire Club. There's some rumors that uh, Magneto may be ending up on that team uh, with some conjunction, with some synergy with Sebastian Shaw. Uh, those rumors aside though how valuable do you think magneto is right now in today's meta you know he is a he's an he's his value's gone up with the alliance war changes in other words before the alliance war changes he was sort of a guy you threw with doom on defense uh at least when, if you had everybody unlocked or built up okay yeah. that's basically what his value was when you had a smaller number of slots with more slots i mean this team becomes more valuable and it, it's a team that works at a fairly low level of investment like you have him in purple gear i think the team does what you want him to do right he gets he pulls everyone together and blinds them and there's a bunch of bleeds that go out and you yeah. kill stuff and so i think it's not an amazing team but it's a functional team that's where he's at right now i i will say i really hope valley that they do rework him because one thing this team this game really needs and does a lot worse than other games like i play galaxy heroes that mm. they do very well is they are constantly either reworking their legendaries or adding new characters that synergize with them to make them better so they're all like super relevant and important like really? when i started all i started relevant in a game <laughs> that's baffling i know that's baffling <laughs> But it's like, I, I will tell you that like I started Galaxy Heroes this year and on the side and be and a lot of experienced players were like, no, these these legendaries are super important. These old two year old legendaries are super important characters like you need to get top five team, top six team, whatever of these older legendaries. And so I just think it would be really cool in this game for players that have put a lot of work into getting magneto or invisible woman or shuri if they found a way to to make those characters I relevant wish. and important yeah i, I, I wish uh, all, all the legendaries had some value in the game right now all right we we did have a legendary comeback to another legendary black bolt who has fallen off a little bit he's, he's kind of a soft counter to the heroes for hire uh with a massive punch down but uh, other than that and and him being super annoying on raid defense uh what where where do you see black bolt in today's meta yeah i think he, you're right you hit the nail on the head valley i mean he was super important for like a month because before we got shang chi and you know there was a kind of hybrid soup team with black bolt and surfer and kestrel yeah. that would beat heroes for hire then shang chi came out and that ruined the, that like you said it has to be a huge punch down or it's like a cleanup huge, job like okay yeah. You know, Infinity Watch got down a couple of them. Now we got to clean up and you use Black Bolt there. But other than that, that's kind of his value in war. He's a good war defense character with some Inhumans or some other characters, you know, if you don't use him for that purpose. So he's a he's a useful character in the meta. He's certainly much more valuable than some of the other legendaries like, you know, in, in, I would say Invisible Woman or, or Magneto. But he's he's not important. Like when I started in this game, this was, you know, 
you know, may have been the most important character in the game, and he's yeah. he's not that important anymore. That's that's a shame. Now, just out of curiosity, do you have you have your black bolt on war offense or war defense? I have him on war offense okay. purely to clean up heroes for hire. Gotcha. Um, just because, frankly, the only annoying thing that could potentially create a problem for us in a war is if we screw up on a heroes for hire and can't <laughs> clean it up. Um, and that's that like my such thought a process fun right team, now. By the way. <laughs> I, I don't find that team fun, and you know, uh, you, you know that sarcastic. there are. I don't know if that came across. I was sarcastic. Anyway. No, I but I mean, team. you know, Valley. There are literally people who love that team. Like you, you know, there's even I other see. content creators I who see. are I, like, I, "Oh I my know. god, I know, I, I love Heroes for I am not one of them. I always I'm, thought I said from the beginning when people when that team was released, I told people, unless you're like super super end game and you're into war, don't invest in this team. Like that's that was my. Yeah, my perspective on yeah, it. Um, yeah, but uh, but there is some value with Shang Chi and uh, Misty in the raids as well. So not for sure. Bad. All right. Um, I did want to talk about what <laughs> if, but sometimes life gets in the way. Can't watch everything when you want to. So um, yeah, we're we're gonna skip what if. So we'll get a we'll get a full season series reaction later. Hopefully we could we could talk about it sometime because I I do enjoy our conversations, but. Uh, yeah, life got in the way. But so instead of that, I want to talk about the casting for Adam Warlock. William Poulter, I think I'm pronouncing his name right, is going to be Adam Warlock in the movie. What did you think of this decision when he was announced as being Adam Warlock in the upcoming Guardians of the Galaxy 3 movie? He was interesting. He's like, an, he's a really interesting looking guy, right? He's got like such an unusual look to him. I one thing he's a, he's but he's kind of young looking no yeah, I mean that well, was my take. See, I thought all the pictures except for this one, this this picture right here. If he does his hair like this and and he you know buffs up a little, I think he could pull it off because one thing one thing the Valley Club was mentioning his eyebrows yes. are, are very unique. But if we go in game to the in game model of Adam Warlock. Look at this, similar eyebrows. So True. I, maybe he was cast based on his eyebrows and they could, they could do <laughs> whatever they want, whatever else they want with him. <laughs> One thing I have a lot of faith in them, man. I mean, everything that's come out, is, th look, there are some things that come out of Marvel where I'm like, eh, it's just okay. Like Black Widow movie to me was just okay. But like, generally speaking, I love their content. I yeah. love the Shang-Chi movie, love What If. Uh, I've been pretty, you know, really you know, a lot of faith in them. So I, I trust their casting. I'm sure it will end up uh, being something that I'm excited about in the end. Yeah, and, and James Gunn, I, I've seen both Guardians of the Galaxy and a new Suicide Squad squad. I like them both. I think he's done a good job with both. So I, I trust James Gunn with his casting choices. Uh, any other final thoughts, brother? That's that's all I got this week. Uh, anything else you want to uh, say or promote or get off your chest before we uh, before we wrap it up here today? <laughs> well, look, uh, d definitely going to be more content coming out of my channel. We're doing uh, we're do we've been I've been doing a lot of high end Doom rating and talking about what Doom teams, Doom two teams are important. Uh, but we've got more more coming out. But I will just say I am excited, Valley, to hopefully be streaming Dark, Dark Dimension five next Ooh. month. Let's let's, let's hope that'll come Ooh. out. I'm excited about that. Are you ready? Are you ready? Do you have your Steel Gear characters and everything? Uh, I'm as ready as probably anybody right now, okay. and I'm so far away. I mean, in other words, it's <laughs> I'm, I'm going really hard good. on Teal Gear, all in on Teal Gear, and it's still uh, it's still a challenge. So, it, you know, it'll 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 be a slog like uh, Dark Dimension Four, I'm sure. But I I find it fun to try and do stuff in the game. I it, last time we talked, the, the game is a little stale, and then now at least we have some stuff to look forward to. Yeah, there's there's some cool things on the site. Now, and where 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 did you finish in Dark Dimension Four? You were you're very high up there in the rankings, right? Yeah, I was the fourth person to complete it. And at the time I had like seven point something million TCP. Okay. So I'm a little more caught up to these guys. I'm still like 12 million or something behind the the big the big boys who I'm competing against. So we'll see if I can I'm if I for can you. keep up with them. I'm rooting Thanks, for dude. you. I want you number one this time. Uh, all right. If I do, we'll, we will uh, tell you what we can. Uh, we can both work together with the community to figure out what uh, what shards to give away. Nice, nice. <laughs> Let's say, oh, oh, yes, yes. That's I forgot about that part. Yeah, I like it. So, um, any, any, any other things? Uh, your the links to the channels, the Twitch, Discord is gonna be down below. Any, any other things you have coming up that you want to uh, shamelessly promote, brother? Oh well, I'll just say this: I, I am working on. Not only am I working on a Doom Two uh, raid infographic uh, for those teams, but I'm working on 
uh, the teal unique and all the gear stuff. So yes. that'll be coming out soon. Hopefully that's something that'll be helpful for the community. It just takes more time to make sure you get it right. Cause I, yeah. any mistake people are going to be upset about. So I trying very hard to fact check all of that, making sure we get that accurate. Nice. Well, that, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Let me know when that is, uh, out and I will promote that as much as I can. Um, always a pleasure talking to you. I, I, I we, we usually do this for the news videos, but yeah, we, we should do this more. Um, I will see you guys next time. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this was a uh, benefit for you and entertaining and giving you guys some value. If it did, hit that subscribe button. Uh, check check me out on social media, notification bell, all that stuff. And Philosopher, give me that Hulk fist, but before you go, brother. And Philosopher, Valley Flying, out. Have a great day.